Hey y'all, it's Zach. Um, if you've never had the experience of visiting New Orleans and trying their food, I'm gonna give you that experience tonight. We're making some shrimp creole. I've got about two pounds of gulf caught shrimp, and I'm gonna start by making a roux. Uh, yes, you can make a roux in the Instapot. It's actually really easy. I would never have thought of it, but it really is easy to make in the Instapot. So, uh, roux is either butter and flour or uh, oil and flour, but since we're making creole tonight, not Cajun, I'm using butter and flour. Um, so I'm going to turn my saute function on, I'm going to put in a stick of butter, and when that's melted down, I'm going to put in a third of a cup of all-purpose flour. So we'll be back. Alright, so I've got my butter melted down, and I've got a third of a cup of flour, all-purpose flour. I'm going to put in there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to stir it around to just get the, get it mixed in, get the chunks out of there. I'm telling you, making a roux in Instant Pot is really easy, up to a certain color. It's not good for gumbo, but for your shrill, creoles and your uh, etouffees, it's really good. All right, so now I'm gonna let that sit for 30 minute cycle. And while the, uh, it's sitting, I've gonna dice up my onion and my bell pepper, my celery. Uh, I've got three stalks and uh, about three or four cloves of garlic. So I'm gonna chop up my trinity and my garlic and I'm gonna peel and my shrimp, and we'll be back. All right, so our roux's been cooking about 20 minutes, and I've only touched it a few times. That's how easy it is to, to cook in this thing. Look how perfect that is and dark. That's about the color you want, so it's about 20 minutes. Um, and I did get the, the hot notice, but no problem, just keep on rolling. Um, so I'm gonna turn the saute function off, and then I'm gonna turn it back on to reset, and we're gonna go ahead and put in our, our onions. And our celery and bell pepper. And we'll get those cooking. That's gonna stop the, the cooking process on the roux. And I've chopped them pretty fine, as fine as I could get. Um, all right, so we're gonna let these cook down in this roux. In the last minute, I'm gonna add my garlic. So we'll be back. All right, so this has been sauteing down for about 15 minutes. And it's really broke down and it got in that roux. And as you go, you can just kind of you know, scrape up anything that's stuck to the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, add my garlic in. Again, you don't wanna add it in too soon because it'll get bitter. So just for the last minute, add that in. About maybe two sips of beer worth. Man, the smell on this is just ridiculous. Yep. You laughing at me? <laughs> <It's ridiculous>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I've got a can of tomato paste. I'm just gonna add a whole another level Lovely. of flavor here. Yes. Kind of a pain in the butt in this house. I know that there's a trick to getting it, but. All right. All right, Are we good. <laughs> so we're gonna saute that in there. All right, I'm gonna cut the cancel button. I'm gonna turn the saute function off. Now I've got. I got a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. Let's go in there. And you'll notice with the tomatoes, that's why it's a Creole dish. So you don't see tomatoes in a lot of your Cajun, your true Cajun dishes. Two cups of chicken stock. I normally try to use seafood stock if I can, but I could not find it. All right, switch. 
So you can get your beer. Mm -hmm. All right, now for my seasonings, I've got two tablespoons of parsley and a teaspoon each of uh, thyme and my favorite Cajun seasoning, Slap Your Mama. And I've got two bay leaves, that's in there. Let me get my wish sauce off. So, got my Worcestershire sauce. I'm just going to give it a quick hit. And I've got my hot sauce. I'm using Slap Your Mama. Give that a quick hit. All right, last but not least, a lot of people add sugar to this. It kind of breaks down the acidity of the, of the uh, tomatoes. But I've got a quarter. Or sorry, a third cup of white wine, a dry white wine. So I'm gonna get that mixed in. All right. Take my lid. Put it on the seal position. Hit manual. Bring it down to two minutes. And we'll be back. All right. We did two minutes high pressure. And did a quick release. Now I'm gonna turn to my saute mm -hmm. function. Back on. It smells really good. Let it heat back up. In the meantime, we'll take some salt and pepper. And if you notice, this shrimp was raw. I haven't cooked it anyway. And that's because I don't pressure cook shrimp. It's too delicate. It will totally change the texture. So. All right. So. Starting to heat back up, got a lot of bubbles going on. So I'm gonna put the shrimp into the instant pot while it's on a saute function. I'm gonna let it cook in that residual heat. And it's only gonna take a few minutes. Start yep, it's already starting to turn pink. So again, shrimp is not made for the pressure cooker. Um, you can cook it in the residual heat or in the saute function after. Uh, or even cook it before and put it and put it in after. So wait till it turns pink. Just a few minutes. We'll be back. All right. So our shrimp cooked for just a few minutes in that heat, and I'll turn the saute function off to kind of slow it down, stop the heat process. Mm. I'm gonna tell you, this is some fine Creole food right here. Sean uh, Brown, what you think? Is it good? Oh, you yes. want some bread? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got some French bread to sop up any um, any juices, mm -hmm. and I've got it served over some white rice. So, some jasmine. That's right. We're going to get eaten, so we'll see you all next time.